Is a 48-hour hospital stay really necessary for infants with fever of unknown origin? Researchers at Stanford University examined 11 years of inpatient data to find out. With infants who are 0 to 30 days, uh, that at the very least practice varies. Some institutions are hospitalizing those infants for 48 hours, some for 24, but um, at our institution it's a 48-hour rule. And so we knew that this was happening and we wanted to know why. Um, and so we looked at a, about 11 years of data on uh, infants who had been hospitalized for fever without source. And we, for each of those infants, we looked at their blood cultures and their CSF cultures and we calculated time to notification um, and basically how long the culture took to, to go positive. And we found that um, we had uh, 1,880 cultures in uh, 1,145 infants. And of those, only six cultures and six infants went positive over after 24 hours. Um, so this suggests that very, very few cultures are going positive after 24 hours. Um, and then we looked at those six infants, and, and we found that all six of them had uh, high-risk characteristics. They had abnormal labs. Uh, so there was some sort of red flag for each of, each of those six infants that suggested that maybe you know, a longer hospitalization was actually warranted in their case. So can you translate this into some kind of clinical uh, practice? What it means is that um, for institutions that are, that are still in hospitalizing all infants for 48 hours, uh, they, can, they can think about moving that to 36 or 24 for infants who have normal labs and look clinically well. And you know, we always say that using your clinical judgment should never sort of be superseded by, uh, by lab values. But um, it turns out that those lab values are, are reasonably predictive of um, you know, when the culture might go positive. So if you're looking at an infant at 24 hours and their culture negative and their labs are good, um, we think that our data suggests you can at least think about uh, discharging. Dr. Alan Schroeder, you mentored this entire project and it's part of an overarching interest of yours in safely doing, doing less with your patients. Right, yeah, you know, I think that um, it's almost our moral obligation to look at practices um, uh, that put children at risk um, and uh, that aren't necessarily evidence-based. And so um, this was fairly low-hanging fruit. This is um, a practice where infants uh, less than 30 days with fever, um, it becomes very rote. These kids come in, they get um, uh, all sorts of testing, and they get hospitalized for 48 hours. Not much thinking even really that goes on. And so we stopped to question, well, where does 48 hours come from? Is that really supported by the evidence? And took advantage of a very large uh, database um, of blood cultures and spinal fluid cultures from our own institution over 12 years to, to answer the question, how many kids have cultures that are positive beyond 24 hours? And so our finding that it was only six kids out of a total, or six cultures out of a total of 1,800 uh, cultures, and that all six of these kids um, had uh, some high-risk criteria um, was, was encouraging in the sense that uh, for kids that don't have those high-risk criteria, uh, we feel pretty comfortable saying that 24 hours is sufficient for those kids. And we learned from our investigation um, that, that, con that, that kids with low-risk criteria constitute slightly over half of all admissions. Mm -hmm. So that's a pretty um, big burden on, on a hospital. And so if you can lessen uh, length of stay by 24 hours on over half of kids that are admitted with fever without source, um, uh, that, that, that should have a positive impact on, on resource utilization, certainly on the harms, the iatrogenic harms that occur uh, on these little babies. Right.